Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Novak. <clears throat> well, as I said in my last video, we're going to go over Ralph's 225-gallon build, his Aquian tank build, and his main substrate. He's going to be adding different substrates, of course, as I said, oil dry, but he's also going to use the fluorite, uh, Seachem fluorite material here, and it's a porous clay. And Seachem has been making this for quite a while. So that's the substrate he's going to be using in this particular aquarium. But what are you going to use? How is he going to make it? Well, he's going to make it out of um, <clears throat> parabolic louvers, or otherwise known as a crate. And it comes in uh, two by four sheets, a crate does. It's made, uh, uh, they call it a light diffuser, a crate, parabolic louver, and this is the plenum. And he bought a one inch PVC tubing, which is relatively cheap. The a crate is not that expensive, and the one inch tubing. Also, what you're going to need is some wire ties. You can buy a whole bag of small, he uses the small size wire ties, not very expensive. You can get over 100. 250 wire ties, whatever, to put everything together. And uh, <clears throat> then you're going to need some screening. And basically, this is the roughed out that he made. And as you can see, the wire ties are holding the PVC pipe onto the egg crate. And the pipe itself, as you notice, it's not using any end caps or anything else. In other words, you don't have any drilling to do into the pipe. And I'll show you how he's going to connect up the uplift tube. But like I said, this is one inch and it does not need to have end caps on the pipes because the wire ties are holding it together. And here's a close up, as you can see, the A crate. And he's leaving about an inch of room on either side. And, and he just measured it for the aquarium. And he'll put the side pieces on. So very little work. But we talked about this. I said, I, uh, I think I would make a bigger opening in the center and cut away the center of those uh, vertical pipes to allow water to flow a lot easier than just having it one inch per side. So what he did, he cut away the center of the pipe to allow water to move easily from uh, all along the plenum. And that's about three inches wide. So he has an inch on either side at the ends and uh, three inches in the center. <clears throat> so you can see that now water can move easily. Instead of uh, having like chambers, it can move easily, and the piping is going to hold the uh, parabolic louver so it doesn't bend or crack under the weight of the substrate and stones and everything else that you're going to put into the aquarium. So basically, that's what it would look like, and the wire ties, of course, are holding the PVC pipe on. So once again, he is setting up his uh, high-density substrate. This is kind of like uh, the same stuff that Eheim uh, substrate that Eheim sells. I think this is like the older Eheim product. Now they make it in round balls. But basically it's the same thing because I had some of this left over. He had it left over. And that is going to sit underneath the plenum to help for biological filtration. Now this ought to remain clean because... There's not going to be any dirt or anything else uh, flowing over it because the plenum's going to be over it. So first you get that set down, or he set it. So now he has everything put together. He's got the vertical and horizontal end pieces put on. And as you can see by the picture here, because the tank's six foot, he had to cut two pieces uh, to make the full length. Otherwise, a four-foot piece would be great, good enough for a 75-gallon tank or 55-gallon tank. But as you can see by the picture, pretty easy. Everything is just wire tied. But there is a next step. 
he got screening and he put screening on the top. You just put your screen, you can add one layer or two layers of screen. It fits right over everything and it's going to wrap around the side. Now, <clears throat> you can imagine it's all put together. What you do is you wrap it around, cut it to size, and you just hot glue gun the screen onto it. So this is just normal window screen that he's using. Once again, you just buy that a roll at the hardware store. You can use that uh, craft mesh if you want. I think that would be a little expensive, but uh, you can use a screen. You can use one layer or two layers of screen to put your stones on top. And the openings are small enough where you should have no problems of substrate migrating through uh, the plenum and the screen. So it's pretty easy. Just wrap it around and then you hot glue gun the screen onto the PVC pipe, the round pipes uh, on the underside of it. Then you cut it, the excess screen off and you're done. Your plenum is basically done. But the next step will be your uplift tube. And we talked about that and what he's going to do with the uplift tube is he's going to put a one inch uplift tube in the center and he's going to use a power head. And he bought a, I think it's an aqua clear, uh, pumps 180 gallons an hour. So it's a very small power head and it has a uh, gauge on it, plus or minus gauge. So you can turn it down to the minus side and he called up AquaClear and they told him that uh, it puts out at the minus about 60 gallons an hour. Well, he's got a pretty big size aquarium there, so that that should work out pretty good. And he doesn't want bubbly noise or anything, so we both said, yeah, that uh, <clears throat> using a power head would be more than likely the best choice. It'll keep things quiet. And you won't need a bubbler. And I have one of those aqua clears. I've been using it for like 20 years. They are very well made aquarium pumps. And they come with a hang on the back or they come with uh, suction cups that you can use. And even though his tube will be taller, he's only going to be pumping so many gallons per hour, no matter how tall the tube is. And he's got a big bottom, two foot by six foot. So we were talking about it. And I think if he puts it on the low end, 60 gallons an hour, he ought to be more than good enough to have fluids move slow enough. Because you're talking 60 gallons an hour, but, but over that big six foot by two foot section. So not in any one place is the water going to be moving at 60 gallons an hour because of the surface area. Okay, so now <clears throat> everything's done. He's got his uplift tube, which is an inch. Fits the power head perfectly. Now you can take this uplift tube and paint it black using fusion paint. You can buy it at any hardware store. It's called fusion. And uh, make sure it dries for at least five days. And uh, you can paint it any color you want. If you have a black background, you can paint it black. You don't need to buy specialty black uh, PVC. It would be kind of expensive if you wanted to do it. You can do it. They sell it on Amazon. You can buy pieces of one inch, uh, two inch black PVC if you don't want to spray it black. But the most inexpensive way you know, uh, would, if you have some of that fusion paint. And let's say if your background was blue, you could paint it blue. Try to get a color that matched the background. But he is going to spray it black. But the next thing you have to do once you're this far along is he was going to put around the perimeter because it's smaller than what the tank is, some stones. So now he's going to be using some gravel that he already has. And as you can see off to the left-hand side, he has another bucket full of gravel that is a black kind of gravel. He already had this gravel, 
And he's also, yeah, you can see where it says black. It was a black gravel. It's not sand. It's actually gravel. But since he had this gravel, this is the gravel that's going to cover the sides of the plenum. And then on top of this, once he gets that all done, he's going to cap that off with a half inch of oil dry. He won't be using kitty litter. He's going to be using the oil dry. He'll rinse it off to get the dust off and lay the oil dry right on top of the plenum, the screen mesh that you're looking at here. And that ought to do just great. He said he's going to put at least a half inch down, and then he's going to top that off with this black gravel that he has. He already has it, so he said he's going to use it. And that is going to be topped off with that gravel. Now, as you can see by the picture here, he put the black gravel down. He already had it. And it's not sand. It's, you can tell it's bigger than sand. So it won't compact. Now he has the plenum, oil dry, and he topped that off with this black substrate he has. But this is not his end byproduct. This is not what he wants to have as his show substrate. He's going to use, of course, the sea chem. And as you can look by the picture here, you'll see where you have the white, and then you have where the, uh, if you can tell, you have the wet oil dry. And then on top of that, he placed the black substrate. I, I don't know what it is. It's it's a, uh, a gravel that he already had. So he layered it. Now he goes with the more expensive Seachem substrate, which uh, I've had this substrate. I used it for planted aquariums. I liked it. it. It was a very nice substrate. I liked it better than the red. And as you notice, he, he's not worried about, you know, anything with iron or anything, because you can put iron in the tank later when the tank's all set up. You can add iron, like flourish iron, to the aquarium, and the that will get sucked through the substrate, go into the where the oil dry is and everything, and that will aid in uh, the bacteria growth. Okay, and he'll probably uh, put in some Fritzine 7 or something, something to help speed along the nitrogen cycle. But I don't really know if he's going to use screening or if he's going to leave the screening out. Of course, you're going to leave the screening out if you want to have plants because he may only have uh, an inch of, you know, substrate of gravel. And uh, the fish would dig into it. So if you put a screen and then your top gravel layer for cosmetic reasons, but then growing pl plants, yeah, you could probably grow plants and now have to try to get through the screen. The roots will. But uh, if the screen's real fine, uh, the, the roots are going to have problems. But anyhow, went out like we all do, and he bought some hardscape some of the wood. Now, usually when I bought in wood that uh, I've had to put it in a bucket, there's two things that happen when you buy wood. Either it's going to be nice and heavy and sink, or you're going to get wood, usually this lighter wood like this, and it may float. And eh, you're going to have to watch the kind of wood you buy. But one thing is you have to watch out for tanning. You wind up buying this wood like this, and it will be just fine when you set up the aquarium, but it may tan the aquarium. And that could, if, if, if you don't try to get that coloring out, looks like tea in the aquarium, you're going to have to use carbon or something. And you'll have to replace your carbon a lot until all that tanning is released from the wood. That's the only downside about wood is it will color the water a darker color like a tea color until that wood stops leaching out those uh, tannic acids that it may have inside of it that turn the aquarium, you know, like tea. 
Or you can take it and put it in a bucket and soak it in a bucket and then empty it and soak it and empty it. And that, that could take, uh, I'm going to be honest with you, that could take, even take months to do that. But if you're impatient, you may want to wash the wood down with the garden hose real good. And you probably maybe want to put it in and use carbon. Go buy yourself uh, six pounds of carbon for about $25 and use carbon to take the coloring out of the aquarium water. That's what I did because I was impatient. I didn't want to keep filling a bucket and empty it and filling it because it would turn the bucket tan color. So like what we all do, we turn around and we see just exactly how the wood is going to look in our aquarium. Okay, so, so far, that's all he's gotten. He's still waiting on the power head, the AquaClear power head, which I would recommend that power head for just about everybody because you can turn it down to the 60 gallon an hour, but you also have to consider the resistance and stuff. Is it really going to pump 60 gallons an hour with an uplift tube and the resistance. I doubt it very seriously. You're probably talking more to 40 to 50 gallons an hour, not 60 like AquaClear said, only because of resistance. It has to pull the water up and it got resistance there. So it'll be slow enough. The good thing of it is, instead of putting the tube in the center of the aquarium, you can put it off to any end of the aquarium, okay? So you don't want it in the center, put it off the left or right side, whatever suits you. And I kind of looked up how much black PVC costs, and yeah, it's very expensive. Better off to buy the fusion paint and paint it. So that's all for this time. That's all we have until he starts getting more supplies in. I hope you enjoyed the video. You know, subscribe and keep track because there is more information about the tank build, how to do it. But I kind of thought myself, hey, yeah, that's pretty ingenious. You just take the material, your uh, screen, wrap it around, and just hot glue it right to the your frame. Doesn't get any easier than that, people. And another good thing is it's you know good if you live in an apartment. So that's it for this video. Uh, until next time, this is Dr. Novak. Happy fish keeping. And don't forget to subscribe so we can keep up to find out how this tank is going to progress and what are the what other little things is he going to do to help the tank along. And so far, to me, so far, it looks good. So until next time, happy fish keeping.